I don't even remember that song. <laughs> the bonus check. He's like, trust me, I'm well aware. Uh. I'm everywhere. Bro. To put him up. Uh, Holy water. <laughs> that shit was fire, dude. I mean, it wasn't nothing like was spectacular, but I slumped the fuck out of it for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I might check it out at some point. Then. It's a little catchy shit to play in the car. Whoa, I got plenty of bang and shit to play in the car. Ain't you never running jewels in the car. I don't know. And then I say, fuck the law. That's word to big. Or was it pound? One of them. Welcome to the album book club. Today we're going to go over JL Dipkiss and talk about JL's career, basically. <laughs> Today we're joined by. How short it was. Uh, your boy C Man 1011. <laughs> Oh, this on so Discord so over here. JL Dipkiss came out in 2017, the debut album. This is following that insane stretch of albums he had been dropping up until this point. He got one, Strange the World. This was uh, produced by Dead Beats and Jerd Beats. So let's start on a positive note. Who the fuck are those guys? <laughs> Corey, do you know who the fuck those guys are? I got no fucking clue who they are. Okay, let's start with my boy Jerd. So Jerd, before this, apparently he did mashups. No shit. Like, when you go to his genius, the first thing comes up for anything other than that, this song, and, and JL stuff, is mashups. Look at him. <laughs> Come and, a long um, way. And he produces too. So, like, it's just, that's all I got on him. So that's all I could truly find. Dead Beats. Dead Beats is the, uh, the homie you'll recognize him from. He produced three tracks on uh, the 2013 album EP by Twisted, A New Nightmare. And it was the one Down With Us featuring Recognize Who Killed the Hook. You got The Deep End with Dominic and Cassie. It's Deep and Dark. And you got Fallen Down featuring The Swollen Members. Uh, the last dude, uh, the non match child dude in Swollen Members, destroys his verse at the end. Like, it's a great song. Great, great beats. Oh, yeah, and that Dead oh, Beats dude. He also produced uh, for Blaze Dead Homie. So, that's what I mean. That dude was actually a real dude. So, Dead Beats is a real dude. Whoop, whoop type of... He fucked with Twisted, so I'm happy. Whoop, whoop. The fucking Falling Down beat is the same beat for Andy Warhol by XV. Uh, both songs are dope, so you can kind of listen to both of them. Just a cool combo. Twisted, fucking Swollen Members, and XV all over the same beat. And Slim, the mobster, did the hook for XVs. So, that's who the fuck these guys are. Uh... Legit producers, though. Cool dudes, seems like. Uh, they just made a shitty beat, though. <laughs> like, I get the <laughs> subject matter, like what the song's supposed to be about, but as a song and the intro to the album, it's it's just okay. Especially compared to, like, you know, the Brain Scatter songs? The first one, yeah. and then the second Like, boom! Insane, right? Like It's like this one's trying too hard. <laughs> it's uh, like this one's trying to be his anthem to the album kind of thing, you know? Like, it just, when this goes back to that cookie cutter album checklist, like, oh, it's got some rock elements in it, too. Hey. Like, yeah, it's, it's really like he's trying it. to be. It didn't do anything. Water... With it. He's trying to be a watered down tech. Uh mm huh. -hmm. That's why that's out. <laughs> It's just that that's the feels from the album. That's what's weird, too. Overall, it's debatable at best, but not bad. But it's still just. So I put it, I put it there. I, it doesn't matter, really. So I don't care, anyway. A track two, you got two up featuring Soul 4Q. I don't know whatever name that means. And then uh, Antec 9, and it's produced by that Soul 4Q dude. You know the fuck that guy is? Or... Never seen his name until the song. No, uh, I, exactly. And uh, but the hook wasn't he auto to brag about. Yeah. So this guy worked with C Mob before. You know who C Mob is? Yeah. You see, he did a yeah. he got Crooked Eye on a remix recently. Yeah, see my fuck with, uh, you know, that's ISO dude and shit. His fans in the comment section love him. So when I see guys like that saying this guy is mega underrated and shit like that, I'm like, yeah, this guy. Because they, they know who ISO is, and they say CMOV is, like, the shit and whatever. I'm like, this guy got to probably be good. Oh, I think the of... only verse I've ever heard by CMOV that I can, like, remember is that um, that song. It was Twisted Insane Song featuring CMOV and King ISO. He has some Kung Fu Vampire stuff. I think there's one with c Mob having, uh, maybe there's JL. I don't know. Look into that. It's got a better beat than Hook. <laughs> How you like that one? How you like that one? Same guy, I believe. <laughs> better beat than Hook. Yeah, it's definitely the same dude on the Hook. The Hook whack. <laughs> it's a sharp JL verse. Just sharp level. Like I, That's what I went with, the way I describe it. The shorter the JL verse on this album, the better. Whoa! <laughs> Depends on which level JL if it's, it's, if it's Strange World JL or Two Up JL. Right off the bat, there's two of them. There's the one that has life in him, and there's the one that just is, oh, Strange World, man, man, like an emo rapper sounding. I'm like, this is weird, bro. I don't, I don't want to do. And now we're gonna talk about on thing JL. 
No, no, hang on. Uh, so you got Sharp JL. Uh, Tech's verse is why JL was nice as fuck on his verse, though. Because <laughs> Tech <laughs> killed his verse. It was one of those, like, oh, yeah, Tech's on your shit. You better bring it. And that's why JL killed it, by the way. That's why, because Tech kills it. It's just the doo-doo hook and vibe killer. Because, like, the song's actually not as bad as we thought it was. It's, this is one of those where I'd say that. The uh, Tech 9 something else effect. Where it's, like, all together as an album, you're like, fuck, it sucked. But if you go each <laughs> one by one, you're like, eh. I can see it's the it. hidden gem of the album. No, it's just one that the ho- if I edit out the hooks, it might be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I might actually do that and then listen. To it. All right, now your own thing. I hated this one. Uh, <laughs> so this song was first brought to everyone's attention on the Storm album about Tech Nine. Bad times. And this is when we all collectively looked at each other and went, "JL, Doc, what are you doing?" <laughs> I'm going to brag about my tattoos that apparently no one else has tattoos. That's his own thing is to get tattoos. Um, I'm going to brag about the clothes I wear. Like no other motherfucker wears the same clothes he does. <laughs> I'm going to brag about being like everyone else and saying it's my own thing. I don't know why rappers do this. Like, And it's a common trend. Like There was a G-Eazy song that blew up that he bragged about wearing all black everything. I'm like, dude, everyone, like, it's not abnormal for people to wear all black. And this is JL's version of him doing what everyone else does and claiming it's his own thing. Yeah, that was that, that was the consensus from, like, the dudes, the real JL fans in the comment section that I took away is what you said. That's verbatim. Like, you're not saying anything special, and the song sucks, so you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, there's nothing special to the beat. He doesn't have anything interesting to say except talking about what he wears and what he does, which is what every other rapper does and wears. Hmm. So, it's it's doo-doo. So, I was going through the comment section looking for my comment, but uh, I deleted him because I was talking mad shit to JL at the time and I didn't want that to save. <laughs> so, I, I have a chain with him. We'll get it to later, but this was the song where I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> that, I remember, though, we were still, like, chilling and shit, and we, we heard this song off the album, and we're like, when you have Seskru dropping Gridluck on the same, at you know, bonus album, yeah. and you hear this, and you're like, wait a minute. So, I was so ripped, I was like, wait a minute. So ripped, I was like, wait a minute. What? Yeah. It's not even fair. That... Seskru are, like, hitting a new peak, and this guy's hitting a new bottom. Well, see, when... When Seth's crew had Gridlock on the same, as like a bonus track on the same album, to myself, I didn't want to admit it, but to myself, I'm like, yo, it's strange really that type of label to where they only want so much social conscious shit to drop, to where like they have to tell JLs, like somebody like JL who could, to like, you should probably dumb your shit down since we have catastrophic event specialists coming out. <laughs> that way people, you know, I wonder if they're... <laughs> like the like, standpoint that 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 adds up a little bit. I mean, it's back there definitely. Then, like, That's we what... want your album to appear to the party crew, and we want Seth Crew's album to appear to appeal towards you know the hip hop hits. <laughs> Dudes in the comment section, like, there's this one who said, "Uh, JL, I loved your sign to the label, but come on." By the way, that's that's our feelings. We're like, "Hey, we're glad you're finally signed." It took him long enough to sign. By the way, remember that. Remember, we had his back longer than Tech and had him sign. Remember that. Like, that's what makes yeah. me salty with like these fans. Like, I know what you feel. I, I bought Brain Scatter too. Like, like <laughs> Gatterall and like Symptoms were like they, t- they connected with me deep. And, like now you turn your back on the fans. Like. That's I it's... still listen to Symptoms to this day. I just uh, just listened to it today. That shit was elite. Front to back, bangers. Perfect album. Like, homie really set the bar with his previous projects. But but that was... this was like his coming out party at Strange. Like, everyone was like, yo, you finally made it here. And then it was like he just took a dump on us. All right, let's talk about the JL trajectory then real quick since we talked about it. I think I found him somewhere after the first album, but what but what really matters is so like he came out in like 2011 with that Just Landed mixtape that I had to expose that one dude with to even look at it, which, I mean, it's not bad. You got fucking UBI's on it. There's a couple gems on this album for sure. You got Wicked Business is a gem. The Wake Up one with UBI was a gem. There's some more, but, but shit like that. And then the Heavy Metal Objects EP is really good too. 
I don't know if you listened to that one. That shit, that was pretty good too. I like that one. And then it was Brain Scatter, where everybody kind of found out because he did that song with Tech and that blew up. The Say You Love Me one. But that album, <laughs> front to back, is a, I just, if you skim through it and you've heard it before, you're just like, yeah, this was good. That one's great. I like that one. This one's cool. I like that one. Is that every one of yeah. them? Like, <laughs> So he knew from whenever he first did this out, whenever that came out, that we knew he could make albums complete. Because then you got like Adderall, which I absolutely loved in the combo with with Subliminal and those banging ass beats. And, and this was different than that album. This was a little more darker, a little more deeper, a little more banging, a little more bass, a little bit more feature heavy uh, on certain songs with with, with KC type of dudes and, and you know uh, you know Nestor the owners on it. R.I.P. That's one thing I miss about. All jails. He used to get subliminal because subliminal made some fire beats for him. Yeah, that's kind of gone on his it's shit true. since he got signed to Strange. It's a great point. Then you got Brain Scatter too. I mean, oh. what he did with the first one was make an album. With this, he went and said, "All right, every song I did before, like I'm gonna crank it up to ten. Each song is like ten. Like, like just the first, you know, title track bang, and of course." Love with with Jeff Turner, monster collabo banger. Then you got Dip Kiss Remus banger, Middle Chunks Bro. fire. It's all fire. Bro, don't even get me started on psychosis. Mm-hmm. I know. As ISO said, if you don't take advantage of the psychosis, we will. I'm like, oh damn. Like yeah. you can't go from a song like psychosis to own thing and expect people to take you serious. <laughs> like, dude, psychosis was like. A whole nother fucking level. Like, he took the bar and raised it even higher. Like, Psychosis was fucking, like... I mean, it was everything you needed. <laughs> that shit was deep. He was chopping. The beat was fire. The hook was fire. <laughs> and he was just topic matter to topic matter, dude. He was just spitting it out. Ugh, that song was clean. I mean, it makes it feel like... Like, J.L. more of a Hobson type... <laughs> <laughs> with Raw and the Nocturnal Rainbow song in it, and that was about it. Then JL did the Breaking Bad News with uh, Info Gates, and, and that, that one's okay. I gotta listen to it again. And then Symptoms, just listen to it again. It's bang or perfect, flawless. And and like we said, like this isn't about being an album. This one's very artsy. This is very specific, very, like, you know what I mean? Like, this wasn't a an all But it flowed album. really well. Like, one song didn't feel out of place. Except like, I, I would, it was I would, definitely artsy and different. Yeah, but, well, yeah we, we, we don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about it's that. It's only one. We don't talk about that song. But, like, it was definitely him, you know, stretching his artsiness side a little bit. But, like, it really worked well. Because, like, even songs like Electric Sky, like, oh. that shit's still slow. <laughs> Blame game, oh, oh blame album. game was fire on that album. Aaron Eminem, Aaron, Aaron Dunson, whatever. There's that line. I li- that was one of my favorites off that. I did say the favorite one off of that was uh, was Electric Sky and another one I can't remember. Back uh, to his doo doo album though. All right, uh, so comment section. This is important because this is you're gonna see something right here. This is really why I like this. That dude was saying, love that you're signed to the label, but come on, man, ain't feeling this man here. Hoping you send something out that I'll really enjoy. So he was he was passive with it, but he did say it. another dude said this was insanely unoriginal crap. But hey, at least it wasn't Darren Saffron or however, however you spell that shit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> man's just got roasted. Exactly. Um, Speaking of that Darren Saffron I don't do it. He gone. Nowhere to be found. Oh, is he? Good. That man irrelevant. The day he got signed. True. Another dude said so simple, so hard. Jail said, uh, you yeah, for man. Uh, simplest song I've ever done, but one of my favorite tracks to date. <laughs> it's like, well, that de- thanks for, uh, that's what we should title it. Listen, here's the answer to the album. Welcome to JL Dipkiss album. And to sum it up with a JL quote, simplest song I've ever done. Oh, hey, this is that <laughs> album, a.k.a. This, AK, this is that song and the album. Yep. He saw it's simple. Down. He didn't have to put no brain power into it. <laughs> so that's why I said you might be right on just like, hey, go pop out an average album for a different demographic and because Seth Screw's about to kill this shit. I mean, we'll see if JL ever puts out another album. Because, I mean, Seth but... Screw's second album felt like that, too, because it, it felt a little more mainstream, strange. <laughs> At this point, it's listening oh, to... Oh, Codename Ego Stripper? Yeah. So you're saying, like, oh, there's there's mainstream, and then there's underground. Well, I'm saying, hey, there's underground, and there's different all the subjects, uh, subgenres, and then there's this other one called Strange Music, which is, like, a watered-down <laughs> version of... of of the two of mainstream and that's well, and that's what the good chunk of that album was. For some you know, reason. Gotti said everything is mainstream. He might have been onto something <laughs> on that Cash Document Specialist album. And Gotti had that line where he was like, "Everything is mainstream." <laughs> might have been onto something. Might have been. On- 
That's why I think you might be right. Cause like that album, like that party song following Double OT made no sense, and I was just like, "This is not, this isn't it." <laughs> it's like another dude said, "Man, I didn't realize rap turned to shit. This is why I don't listen to any new shit." So either he was a troll, but he goes on to say, and then someone said, "Explain." He says, "It all sounds the exact same. Money bitches and how they are the best." <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, and I was like, "Well, I, like this guy doesn't seem like a troller because." <laughs> It's right, so that blame the song. Yeah. This fucking sucked. The the fuck jail, we all know you could do way better than this. Come on, scratch my hand. This dude said somebody commented and then deleted it. <laughs> but uh this dude responded and said, Okay Eloto, okay, don't criticize any artist ever. They're just doing quote unquote doing their own thing, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> so the dude had to have said to him, Oh, he's just doing his thing. <laughs> I was like, damn. If you diagnose a person's status and it's hating, boy. <laughs> Yo, I said, I said, listen, I said, where's my rap? <laughs> I said, there's a thin line between pimping and preaching, but leading the sheeple into the steeple is pure evil. Burning. So there's a thin line between hating and criticism and like motherfuckers need to learn it. Like, that's how I feel. This is what it made me learn, by the way. Yeah. That I don't see how. Be a like... new phrase. Yeah. I mean, you can, like... It's not like JL's dumb. I mean, he does have... I mean, I imagine he lost a few brain cells when he got that head tattoo. <laughs> like, a few of them probably got bounced around and destroyed. But he's not dumb. Like, he knows. He knows he turned out. Like, JL is probably writing a song like own thing, and in the back of his mind, he's like, bro, bro this is whack. This is not... You might be right. I could do so much better. But he's gonna do it. Because... I mean, let's say Strange did say something to him. He's not going to diss Strange like that. Or maybe, like, he just in the back of his mind, he wanted to appeal to that party audience when he got to Strange. He wanted to appeal to the the few people of Strange that got introduced to Tech Nine with songs like um, <laughs> that wax song and did with 2 Chains and B.O.B. Um, yep. Hook go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so... But JL's not stupid. He knows this album is nowhere near as good as his previous projects. He knows that. Yeah, let me tell you what he defended it with to that guy that shitted on him. He said, the hell are you talking about sucked? Because no, cause, cause I ain't chopping? Fuck out of here. By the way, listen to me very quick. If motherfuckers ever say that again, I'm going to laugh. Because I said, I listen to slow-ass motherfuckers. I listen to ASAP Rock. I listen to AC Low. I listen to ASAP Rock. ASAP Rock ain't chopping no shit. Exactly. Still dope. <laughs> I listen to Rob so I listen to New York LP from way back. Like, I listen to these, like, fucking slow-ass dudes. And it's like, that ain't the problem. Priceless is one of the slowest motherfucker rappers at times. I should say, like, Priceless, Ooh, like, some boy, of his I'm verse, I'm like... I'm he'll have... <laughs> Like, a punchline drag on for three fucking bars because he ain't saying it too fast. And he's still dope. <laughs> well, he has dope moments. I was like, motherfuckers but, pretending you ain't chopping. Like, what? That was the Chris, weirdest shit. Chris Webby ain't doing no chopping. Uh-uh. Still fire. No, true. I do say about oh. ASAP Rock, though, this dude remixed it and over a beat, banging beat, different type of beat than the one it's on, and sped it up a little bit, and it sounds fire. Him just chopping on it just sawing it down you got it's fucking let's dumb. just be real one of his label mates prozac he really tried to be a chopper but he shut ain't up. no chopper shut up. He ain't no chopper man but prozac will still fire black ink was an amazing album what's what Corey, the deep cuts prozac is saw that you ain't no chopper what are you doing on that <laughs> ain't no fucking chopper Motherfuck. when they put with him on that shit with chris and ritz and tried to get him to chop on that like uh... ritz did it either though he was too busy complaining on the first part of his verse and like oh you want to hear me chop it's like why'd you get on the chopper song then if you want a bitch go do a bitching song like what the, the first time i saw that come out i was like prozac what are you doing on here <laughs> you ain't no chopper boy mm-hmm. You need to be on that shit with Murs and Mayday. <laughs> so Jay said, fuck out of here. I do feel the play on shit here. Stereotyped as a chopper. That's why I did this slow. And I was having fun with being laid back on the hook. <laughs> That's what his defense was. So Another dude said, love tech, but this dude is garbage. <laughs> I was like, damn. Because so that was the other thing. What about somebody listening to it for the first time? And this is what they heard. And this was someone's legit reaction. And then Dude commented, 
JL is usually a beast. He's insanely lyrical and articulate as normal. This is just a different style. I still like it. And then the dude said, first time I heard this, to be honest, I'll have to listen to some of his other shit. So, that was it. Back to, who the fuck produced this? So, look, somebody had to fall on the sword on this album. And there's a lot of people that did. Uh, it says seven. Is that right? That's what I was going to say. But I assumed it was a seven song. Oh. I got, uh, it's got a dog shit hook, boring verses. There's nothing redeemable about this song. Like, you never need to listen to it. As you said, the comment points out being your own thing as described as what everyone else is doing, uh, down to the horrible everything. Uh, fucking, that dude said, damn it, love tech, but this dude is garbage. <laughs> I was like, man, that dude really nailed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, just read the comment. All right, that, that, that's it for that. This song sucked. He made the song Hate Nature because he knew the song On Thing was coming right before it on okay. the track list. <laughs> that was one of my jokes, yo, because... Because you know how smoking is before psychosis? Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is in real life. He did the yeah. exact same thing here. I, this is what I mean. Like, this is why I think you're right. I think this is, like, fucking with us at this point. Like, he knows. <laughs> Jail ain't stupid. He made hate nature in order to... Oh. Oh. Echo us, is that... Bruce Dead Echo. Bruce Dead Echo. JL dedicated this one to me when I saw him down on the Password song. He said, you whack, bruh, and Hate Nature is a chopping joint amongst other chopper-friendly joints. That's what I mean when he kept coming with this chopper shit. It was weird. Hold the hate, homie. You keep pushing that and commenting the way you do. Know what comes along with it. Damn it. Echo is my... <laughs> Yeah, so let's just be very, very straightforward right now. Just because you a chopper does not mean you good. Just because you say it fast does not mean you're intelligent. Rich. Exhibit A is logic. <laughs> logic <laughs> says it fast, but he's not saying anything. He just says it fast. So just because you make a chopping joint does not make it good. Psychosis was not good because you were chopping. Psychosis was good because of what you were talking about. <laughs> and the fact that you were chopping on it. But that doesn't make it good. You know what I'm saying? And let's address this hate nature shit right now. Just because you say, if you come at something with an intellectual point on why this is bad, you are not instinctively a hater. There is a difference between hating for the sake of hating and critiquing. Critiquing does not insinuate that you're hating on somebody. When we, quote, hate on this album, it is because we know that JL can do a hundred thousand times better. It is not because we were hating on JL for the sake of hating on JL. <laughs> there is a very, very distinct difference here. This shit is very annoying in society today. And, I mean, Priceless really did, you know, he said it best. If you diagnose a person's status, then it's hating. <laughs> like, you, like, you can talk about something <laughs> and critique it without, like... And I think this is strange, like... I feel like they picked that shit up from Tech. Because everyone heard the song Fragile, right? And Tech's whole thing was, you know, complaining about, you know, people who critique his art. The mainstream ones. Not the dudes that listen to him. And I'm like, dude. You got it. You thick in your skin. <laughs> like, just because they critique. Like, it's just, it's, it's annoying. There's a very distinct difference. So this hate nature shit just comes off as very like, if you try to diss this album at all, you're just a hater, bro. And that angers me just a little bit. Because <laughs> JL, you know this shit is whack, dog. You were not writing this going, oh, own thing is the best song I've ever written. You weren't. <laughs> you know this is whack, and you knew people were going to hate on it, so you had to make this song. That's my piece about this song. <laughs> Anything you would like to add to that? Yeah. <laughs> I wrote this back on uh, March 17th, 2019. Look, Hate Nature is one of the few standout tracks on the album. It's about me. So, well, <laughs> it's about me, supposedly. It proves when he raps about a subject that he's actually passionate about. It's fire. So the haters truly made him a better artist, thus proving their point and should be further proof of disappointment in the cliche lazy songs. So, yeah, so that's what I wrote. And I've, 
Like, I feel like a song "Hate Nature" would have been more well received if it would have came on an album like "Symptoms" because it would have been like, "Yay, nobody, nobody." That really was on instead of Abu album. Dhabi. Yeah, like I don't think anyone would have cared. But you put this song on a whack album, knowing people were going to talk shit about it. <laughs> it it was like a um, it was like backpedaling in the middle of the album is what the song felt like. Like I, I know I'm turning out some some crap, so here's a song addressing all the haters. <laughs> So it's got a bang beat produced by Seven, and it's three verses. By the way, this is something I point out on the password. Motherfucker using doing the Hobson, like oh, now all of a sudden we do two verses. But you're not ISO. You got to make two verses that are dense. Then and they don't do that. So we're just getting robbed. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, well, it just said it was the best banger on the album. Uh, it's actually a really good song. <laughs> it's an elite song. 69 out of 10 is what I'd give it a rating of. Hate Nature? Yeah, Hate Nature. Really good. I like it. Flow, bars, everything, subject matter. Bang. I think, I think the song it's on itself is a solid song. Like exactly. I said, I think this would have been more well-received on a better album. But he put this song in the middle of a doo-doo album for a reason is all I'm saying about it. <laughs> it's the only one you can bang. Are you talking about, oh, I want to listen. What would you say to bang? Some whack dude? What would you say? Some whack dude. <laughs> Meanwhile, you could be banging this at least about you. You could feel good, like, hey, this song about me ain't it good? <laughs> oh, damn. But I do agree that Hey Nature is a solid song. True. Uh, we got but, out. like, saying it's the best song of the album, the bar's not set very high. That's just, It's still good. I like, I think if it, like I said, if it was on Symptoms instead of Abu Dhabi, it's still, I'd still, re- same thing, though, it'd still be one of the best songs on the song. It's just a banger. I really, I think it's, like, a good song. Like, like if I made a list of every good JL song, you know, most of these are getting canned or edited out shitty hooks for songs for certain ones. But this one's definitely on the list. It's good. It was actually the Disco Boogie dude that produced 340. So that's why that Out the Hood song has that style to it. West Coast shit, 840. Cause it got Should we even address out the hood, or can we just say it's doo doo and move on? <laughs> let me, all right, let me do my notes. It's really tiny. <laughs> That's why it's doo. <laughs> uh, I mean, I said I mean he vibes well on it. Subject matter is good. Is a good thing, but underwhelming verses and the features doo doo. So that's all I got. <laughs> okay, Neff the Pharaoh has been on something else. Like that name has kind of been Elmer? around, right? Oh, not that something else. No, know. no, not something else. Though. I feel like he's I been looked, featured on some other underground dude that I can remember. I looked him up. I, nothing showed up, but I wasn't really wanting to find anything. <laughs> okay. I, just, I feel like I've seen Neft Affair before, and I like he's just whack. Sucked on this. You know. Then you got Saturday featuring Marley Young doing the hook. Uh, you got the Popper and Tech 9. It's a celebration type song. Popper kills his verse. I like the way he went through the days and shit. So really, like, Popper's a big stand down on this. Tech's barely on this. Jail's fine on it, though. And the hook is more towards doo-doo. It's... It's... Sorry. <laughs> okay. The hook leans more towards doo-doo and long than it does good. So it's just a little long because... Did you... If you hear the hook, it just goes on for some odd reason. And like a two-thirds the way through, you're like, wait, what? It's still going? <laughs> No, that's that, that was my problem with it. But I I like hearing this is what's weird, like this feels like a Tech Nine song. This is something we would have gotten off of uh off of Misery Loves Company or Psychology. We would have got one with him, Popper, and some other and then a younger Casey dude and they do a happy Kansas City vibe song. And that's what this is. Why I said it feels like a strange music album more than a JL album. Yeah. I never I didn't think of it like that, but that's a good point. Okay, so this one, also, motherfuckers, this one's actually produced by Burner. That's why I fuck it up. Uh, you know who Burner Music is? You know what he produced? You ready? You know what it is? What's it? Burner, that's Joey Cool's dude. So that means he produced Out There. Oh, stop stop that. that. Featuring King Iso. That shit fire. I, I edited out Joey Cool, just Iso's verse. Fire. <laughs> Iso murder. That's typically that what I do on Joey Cool songs. Yeah, that's what I had to do. Sorry, Joey. There's only like a couple. There's like one of them. The one he did with JL Remedial is okay. But Iso is insane on that. Stop that. He also produced that Too Many one. Too Many featuring JL. That one's a banger. See, JL was fire on that song. Joey Cool yeah. was wet. JL was fire. And then he did that, like I said, that out there one, that mega collabo. Seth out Crew, there was JL really tech. good. So, I mean, Burner, like, he did Joey Cool's dude, but 
together. I mean, they the get best thing to take features. away is you never know where they mix in the mayonnaise. <laughs> All right, UBI. <laughs> uh, he produced the uh, FYI for for your information featuring Mac Lethal. That's the one with Mac Lethal. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that one. I like my boy Mac. Yep. Yo, I listened to uh, some skim through his Max older albums last night on YouTube. The ones that show up. Nice. And one of them was kind of like a reference to that Weekly Wage song, like all the way back. Korean barbecue, yo shit. Uh, just, I, that was, I listened to the one with his bald ass head, and then the one that <laughs> Seven produced, and then I skimmed through that one, and then the other one. His album, album, his older albums are solid, I heard but nothing comes drum. close. I heard War Drum. I like that. I don't know, I feel like Mac just needs an acquired taste. I feel like he, I feel like I like, what about the one with Seven, though? Did you, we uh, we on the JL episode. We gotta know? say this for another conversation. I loved it. <laughs> we gonna talk about that risky song featuring Nave Manjo. What are you skipper doing? I'm not done yet. Uh, Burner music. <laughs> so he produced on two on Adderall. I'm back and how to dip kiss. So that's where boom. Burner I'm back music. was nice. Yeah, I mean Burner Burner makes some good beats. I feel like you gotta give the producers credit. If we talking about a doo doo album, we might as well give the producers some credit. <laughs> Someone's getting credit. If JL's getting all the flack. You know what I mean? Someone's I getting the positive vibe. We're like, oh, this guy, he did a good beat, though. He couldn't save it. They're like, homeboy did a shitty hook, but his beat was nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Risky. I did this one real short. Uh, you'll like it. Um, it's Risky featured in uh, Nave Manjo, produced by Seven, and it's a sex song. That's all you got. <laughs> and a doo-doo. <laughs> like, you, can, you can critique it. I'm not even... Uh, uh, we can move on. I don't do I mean, that. It's a, it's a sex song. That's all you need to know. Yeah, exactly. Catch away. <laughs> uh, featuring Joey Cool, produced by Java. It's the patented JL verse and flow. Good beat. Okay, Joey. <laughs> okay, Joey Cool verse. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can. I can't deal with the the way. Yeah, yeah. That shit gets to me a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. It's got a good beat and Jay will kill it, but yeah, it's I don't know. It's, this was produced by Java. Beat is nice. Beat's good. I got nothing on Java. But number nine. You ready for this one? This is the one that pissed me off. Where I was, where, we're, where he? We're gonna talk about password now. <laughs> All right. So as I told Corey, that hook hell of Ivy. Okay. So it's produced by Mayday and the Pushers. That's a powerhouse collabo. Okay. We got Mayday. Okay, then you know that recognized one, one too many, and then those uh, free yeah, yeah, remixes yeah. he did, he had one was Pushers, bangers. Yeah. So I fuck with the Pushers yeah. and had him on for one of those, his fifty two. It was a good beat, good producers. <laughs> Shout out. Um, <laughs> there he has a lyric where he says something about people telling him be too lyrical, and I and I say ain't nobody telling you. He's too lyrical. Okay, let me just say this now. <laughs> you know, I put this on whatever you want. Uh, J.O., nobody's ever confused you for Nino Bless or Lupe Fiasco or ASAP or AC Lone or any of those top tier dudes when they want. Like, <laughs> nobody even confused you for Tech 9, bro. Like, come on. You're not as even lyrically as Tech 9, you know? You're not Locksmith. You're not Immortal Technique. You're not RA. Come on. Man. He ain't Nino. His vibe as fuck, hook, and beat work. He has, he, there's a funny one. There's a plus one point for all you keeping track at home. You get, he, he's saying something like, we, we speak in Chinese, and in, in the background, he's like, like ping pong ping. And it's funny, it's <laughs> fucking racist <laughs> as fuck, but it's funnier than racist, so it's funny as fuck. But I'm like, this dude, ping pong ping joke in an album? Let's go. That's what kind of album it is, by the way. You want to know? That's, it's those two things. <laughs> I didn't try on this song, and ping pong ping. Like, that's what we're dealing with. This is what we mean. <laughs> Somebody commented that, though. They were like, ping pong ping. I like them. Like, yeah, ping pong ping. Stupid. It's skippable, though. You don't have, you don't have to listen to passwords. <laughs> My other joke was, is, <laughs> let me ask you this as an expert at uh, Chinese. Bruce, you too. Bruce, are you dead or you low? Do you think that Ping pong ping is Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> ping pong ping. You think that means something? <laughs> is that an ad lib? Where he's a is that a bar, bar in China? I think it was a play on no, bing I, bing bong bong. That's it's an underwhelming song for such a great beat. Jail tries to save it at the end, but shows wasted potential. He does a little burst in the end where he actually like makes a song that doesn't suck. So, but that's it. You ready for your another song? This one's for you. <laughs> We're about to talk about technology. Yeah, I'll keep this one. 
This is another quick one. You can handle it. Technology featuring Tech 9 produced by Seven. From Genius said, Tech 9 said this was to be on Strange Rain collabos. So there's, that's what I said. That's what I've been hitting at too. That's what I mean. This album's not. This is exactly what Joyner Lucas's first album was on a label. That's what this is. This is all shit thrown together. And this is this is why like we were right to call him out on it. And he was wrong to even put up a facade. Yep. He shouldn't even defend. He should have just been quiet at least like. Show some respect to what your career is, but not just <laughs> let the label tell you what to do. And it's like, come on. It's a sexy cyber joke if you want. <laughs> it's, it's cyber sexy, not sexy cyber. So it's not a good song. If you want a good sex, if you want a song that's good that has those two words kind of as the theme, hops in over this. <laughs> I call it an internet sex song. All right, go ahead and talk about fuck everything. Special jam. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, fuck everything. So this is a minute 46. It's like a skit and a song kind of together. Well, the song is only like a minute 20. <laughs> yeah, there's a, they said there's a inner, there's a thing in the middle, the end, and the start. So like, yeah, it's really short. But there's 65 fucks in it. And it's just him going, fuck this, fuck that, fuck you, fuck me, fuck y'all. It's just that shit. So what I said like a year ago on this, so it's artsy, it's different, I respect it, it's a passionate song. It shows his pen game level to do what he did with a writing limitation is just, that's top tier, and it's self-imposed challenges breeds innovation. So I feel like this is like one of those songs on the album, you're supposed to go, hey, you did something different, I love art, even if I don't like it, I still like it. That's how I feel on this one, I mean it's fine, you know, it's what it is what it is, but it's the fact that he did a writing limitation and like if he does this on you know this is this is how it is where UBI did all those consonant consonant wordplay shit on on on, uh, on that one verse like it's shit like this but like he's like if he did this and then like on the next album he did something like not with fuck but did it differently it, we'd be all be like oh that's the shit well it starts somewhere type of thing I feel like saying fuck I mean that, that's easy like I could yeah, write he went up and down <laughs> and it was 20s. happy it was sad it was depressed it was get away from me he went through layers of, uh, of throughout what True. he did it, he did a great job with it yeah okay i can see that point i can see that point. saw it down you should have saw that to begin with i've been seeing that point get out of here cat so done to me like i feel this one personally this one's featured and recognized it was produced by burns not made it just burns uh he did a great job on the beat it's an elite song it's got a great beat great hook shout out to right the subject matter that's been brewing throughout albums now like that's the really cool this is why i said like this is what's so weird about this album this is like this ain't just a one-off song this is something that's been building for over an album now you know yeah um, then... this was one of the songs off the album that i actually listened to yeah definitely i listened yeah, to it a couple too. times <laughs> well yeah i mean rack's my dude but like <laughs> That was what drew me. Like after I listened to the first eleven songs, I was kind of giving up by the end of the shit. But I saw Rex feature, and I was like, I gotta listen to it, and I'm glad I did because this song is actually good. It was JL actually being more JL, in my opinion. Like yeah. you can tell, there was actually like he had something in mind with this song, <laughs> and you know, Rex always kill his shit. Put that the lyrics are top tier in this. I just want to say that again. Yeah. Absolutely. This felt like a JL song. Yeah. Well, this one, Hate like, Nature, and uh, we'll get the next one, and <laughs> save it, and then uh, the other one. Like, you could have stuck this on Symptoms, and I would have been completely, like, this would have been, a, you know, it's a dope song. His lyrics top tier book level in this. You know what he's thinking, how he's feeling. Picture per perfect adaptation from mind to pen. Songs like this show he's a top tier rapper on deep, complex, passionate songs. Because he's able to convey what he wants to convey through his pen. That's what makes you top tier. That's all you got to be able to do. And that's what he did on this song perfectly. Just per And Wreck and the beat, you know, Wreck and Burns come in and help, and they complete it all, and it's a masterpiece. You know, that's what this is. Yeah, I mean, I got nothing. I mean, you said it. I got nothing else to all add right. to it. We got propaganda produced by B.com. Who the fuck is B.com? <laughs> that's an excellent question. Who the fuck is this? Where is it? Alright, B.com. If you go to B.com, you might get a virus, so I'm not going. <laughs> he also produced, uh, just on light research from yesterday, last night, today, all I got was he produced Gang Banging on Love off the symptoms. So, that's where he goes back to. I didn't know he produced that. Never What's listened that? to that song. Whoa. Wait, what? You didn't listen to that song? 
I mean, I listened to it, but it wasn't one of the ones I gravitated towards on that this album. A propaganda. So I've ever done a refer to phone, because these are notes from last year. It's a diss track against propaganda. What's not to love? Solid lyrics. Mainly focuses on the news, but not the same teeth as Immortal Technique or Nino Bless. But for this subgenre of socially conscious, I love it. And it gets, quote unquote, elevated above all the meaningless songs by default. Plus a great for the tempo of the song. I agree. He again. This feels like actual JL. Like yeah, but it's not JL, a meaty. It's not, it's not like a meaty though. It's my only beef. It's not. You know, I don't think it's as good as you know done to me. But I mean, he's actually talking about like I can't excuse some like shady lyricism if you actually are like talking about a topic that's interesting. And not talking about your tattoos and your clothes. <laughs> that instantly gets elevated in my eyes. Because, like, you know, I mean, there's, you know, obviously dudes you're not going to beat in this, you know, this type of socially conscious. Like, you're not going to top Immortal Technique. You're not going to top Nino Bliss. Like, it's, it's, yeah, but you Craig just, you Smith just... came on and did shit like that and killed it. They put a man in jail for 15 years. He missed all of his kids' teen years. The system be creating dead beats. Cause they ain't letting us get green here. You want money, Nick? You gotta pay for it. Work harder than the next man. Be a slave for it. Again and again. And if you fall for it, they'll put you in a cage for it. It ain't no coincidence. My friends in the suburbs heard opportunities that they didn't deserve. Word to truth. All I know is I murdered a booth. And if you step out of line, homie, they're murdering you. And they ain't gotta take your life to do it. Whatever you wanna pursue, they'll just move it. And they know that you'll just lose it. The job is cool, but they'll never let a monkey do it. Enron executives will cover up infidelity. Infidels in the jail. We believe anything they Tell, tell FBI, come to the picnic. Tell us where the killer of Martin King is held. Black Ops, Kennedy waving at the crowd on a blacktop. All you hear is six back to back shots. Like, I, don't know, like, I don't know, man. Seth Crew came on and killed it when they tried. Seth Crew did. I I don't think Seth Crew is willing to say the same shit that Immortal Technique and Nino Bless say, though. They're all pussies. <laughs> like, they, there's a certain filter that Seth Crew still has. You know what I'm saying? Like, I respect, their, I respect their shit, and it was nice. I mean, uh, Gridlock was an amazing song. But they still ain't saying the same shit that Nino says. Or Immortal Technique. I'm talking V-Mask boy uh, shit. Like, this motherfucker Nino was drowning Obama and Trump in his yeah, video. Like, I love like it. I love Seth Crew ain't doing that shit. But it. I do respect Seth Crew's, you know, take on it. But it, it, ain't, it ain't in that tier. That's how I feel about this. I respect it. I think it's good. Yeah, I know. I agree. <laughs> but it's not, you know, it's not that tier. Um, I wouldn't take off points for the song on the album, basically. You know, it's or I wouldn't take off points for the attempt. But it's lacking the teeth like a mortal technique. Or, and this is what I said, Abstract Rude did a song uh, where it's like, It's the mania. It's the mania. Don't listen to the mania. And they're all on a him, Bus driver. Uh, AC alone and Micah Nine's all on it, and they kill it. And it's like JL, if you don't, if you, don't, I'm pretty sure it came out like years before. Like, if your shit ain't as good as that, don't even bother. Like that guy, theirs is elite. Like, if you want to hear a good song about news propaganda, just listen to that. Way better, way longer. Everything be- better, beat better, everything. Okay. Fucking corporate lackeys, elevated. Pussy's got me elevated. Yo, this one's featuring Chris Calico, Adrian Truth, Emilio Rojas, and Joey Cool. Now, this was produced by Austin Fig, Austin Figueroa, Austin Fig Newton. Nobody knows. But, you know what he's produced before? Austin Fig Newton? Yeah. You ready? This is one of my shit. Like I, like I said, I don't fuck with this dude anymore, but this song was my song when I fucked with him. I just want to <laughs> say hello to Adele. He produced it. I was like, oh, damn. Oh, uh, say hello to Adele was fucking dope. That beat was nasty. I was like, yeah, it was. I was like, damn, J.O. linked up with that guy? That's a good find. I like that. Yeah, that song's nasty. Yeah, that's why this beat's pretty nasty, actually. I put nasty as fuck beat. J.O. destroys his verse. He has a lyric where he says, I don't think there is anything about being broke I'll miss. I'm like, oh, damn. It's just on the face value. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all right. Dig deeper, you like... Oh, he's saying fuck that lifestyle and fuck everything. Then you go a third layer deeper. You can get into poverty and politics. You could say JLB and Sign has freedom from poverty. Like, just look at it like that on the face value and simplicity. Think about that one. 
So that's why that line nasty. Yeah, I agree. I didn't have any beef with this song the first time I listened to it. Because, like, I, I, it's hard for me to, like, the first time I listened to an album, I listened to it. And then, you know, the trash songs I fell away and the ones I think got something I re-listened to. And I re-listened to Elevated several times because I felt like JL's verse was actually, like, you know, it was, you know, it had something. It was some shit to listen to and think about. He starts so I had, I had no beef with JL on the song. He starts his verse, life is unpredictable and unapologetic. Hustling's habitual, winning is not genetic. Struggling is hectic, without it, just not as epic. Like, bruh, like, that's really good. Like, when he tries, he can do it. Like, this is what I mean. This is what I did at the ISO album. I went in and focused on certain bars. Like, your album, ha- your song has to be, your verse has to be good enough for me to even bother. And, like, that's the problem. There's not a lot of quotables from this album. If we're just going strictly quotables, how many have I done until this song? Like, that's the point. You yeah. Know? There's only two songs that get a pass from not having quotables. And the rest, that's on no songs type of thing. So Yeah, I, I completely agree. That's the real issue because we could go through, you know, I could we could go through Diamonds. There's some quotables on that one. Uh, do you believe there's some quotables? Slick Talkers has some quotables. Like, I know that for sure because that's what I took away when listening to him the first couple of times. I'm like, damn, JL said that. I'm like, I got to hear that again because that's nice. You don't have it with this, and that's why people stop fucking with it. Like Corey said, I listened to it one time. That's it. Like that's why it sucked. Ain't no point in like, coming back. When you listen to an album, you gotta have some shit that sticks out. Like it only took the Gridlock song for me to like want to listen to to that SS crew album because that shit had some bars in it that you were like re-listening to. Because like you never really heard Sess Crew say that kind of shit, right? <laughs> Up until that point, like they made you know. Um... References here and there, but like nothing to that extent. I mean, yeah, Wally before that, two albums before, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they, they, you know, they they had some stuff, but it was never, you know, it was never that. I it was to, never what they did on Cash Talking and Specials. Again. I can't remember. I know there's some pranging songs on it, but I can't remember if they said anything too. Maybe. But that's a good point. When you first listen to an album, there's gotta be something that like. There's got to be some bars that stick with you to make you want to re-listen to it, and there wasn't a lot of that on this album. All right, we got number 15, The Time, featuring Church Boy, produced by Seven. It's just one long verse. It's deep. It's a reflective song. It's good. It's it's solid. It's a deep ending song, you know. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. It was a solid way to end a crap album. <laughs> That's how I would put it. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't nothing spectacular, but it was a good song. It was deep. It's not something I re-listened to a bunch, but no dog I had I had no beef with this song specifically. It's just like the expectation, you know what I mean? When you've set people up. That song? <laughs> <laughs> when your first, you know, oh so many songs, like, your, you know, your first ten songs, there's only what? Two? Stand out in your first ten? Like, by the time you get to fifteen, you're just kind of like, I, I kind of want this album to be done. <laughs> It wasn't like symptoms where I wanted the shit to just keep going because every song was a fucking banger until you got to, you know, bye. But we don't talk about that. <laughs> hey, that was actually a banger though. That's what that's. By the way, that's what makes it weird. It's, <laughs> it's got a whack hook, whack subject matter. Okay verses, okay beat, just does not fit in. Yeah. All those. I mean, we can say that about those. several albums though. I mean, if we want to go back to kick and screaming, the hardest fucking song on that album was. Uh, what was that song you did with uh, Twisted? No, that's my shit. Not the, not the one towards the end of the album, though. Uh, do I have to... Let me look it up. The party song. Um, that shit. Oh, that was rolling up my Dixie cup. Lit yeah, Dixie cup. Okay, okay, that beat was the hardest beat. <laughs> that Kenny beat was said, one of the hardest beats yo, on Kenny, that album. Kenny said the exact same. He said it had the most bass. That shit was one of the hardest beats on that album, but that song was kind of whack. But uh, that was like one of two songs on that album that weren't good. That pretty much sums up the JL album, though. Wait, if you're going to give it a grade rating, bonus what would track. you get? But I'm not, I don't do that. I'm like Yahtzee. We don't do numbers or letters. We just talk about it. And if you can't tell what the fuck I think Uh-oh. about it, then you ain't listening. <laughs> okay. It's a shit album. I only li- recommend listening to a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, wait, we'll, we'll, we're gonna go through in a little bit and we're gonna uh, play some doo doo, bang, slump, dog shit type of shit. Cause I'm curious okay. actually. I, I couldn't do it cause I had to listen to the songs again to even know what the hell I was talking about. 
Now that I know that I'm ready. You got a fucking bonus track, aka pre order track, everywhere, produced by Dead Beats. It's a great beat. The bass is insane in it. Who the fuck is Dead Beats? I don't even remember that song. <laughs> it's a bonus track. He's like, trust me, I'm well aware. I'm everywhere. You look like what I do. Somewhere. Hang on. Uh, so, oh, that's the wrong guy. Dead Beats, how's that do? I said produced for Twisted, uh, Blaze Your Dead Homie. I did those Twisted song, Andy Warhol for XV, all that shit. Look, that that's a signature JL flow. When he said the lyric hit me with the when did this happen? I love that lyric. I, I don't know why, but I just like that joke. When did this happen? I just like that he said it. Hit me with the when did this happen. So that was a good one. It's two long verses, solid bars. I always liked the beat. Excellent flow. That's what I'll say about it. It's actually and uh, it's better than like half the songs on the album. It's pretty good. We got I have like really no opinion on the songs. I don't even really remember it. Right. Got uh, JL Dipkiss, 15 tracks, one bonus, but fuck everything is kind of an in-betweener. We got Tech 9 something else vibes. We got Strange the World. I put this in the I don't know, no strong opinion, underwhelming song. Can you confirm that? Mm, Strange the World. I got Banger Good, Doo Doo, Meh, I don't care, Deep, I don't eh, know. I don't care. Well. That's what I'd put Stranger World under. I put it underwhelming. Uh, two up. Where would I put that? Where would you put that? I put that in meh. 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 I don't care. You can debate it. You can. Uh, I. I think it's okay, but I don't feel strong in a negative way. But that hook kind of doo doo. I would I would classify it as meh underwhelming. <laughs> I'll make that a category. Think... <laughs> uh, on thing, slump, best song on the album. Oh, that goes into dodo. <laughs> no, we're putting it in dodo. Yeah, dodo. Dodo. Uh, hate nature. That goes into good. Yep. Uh, out the hood goes into dog shit. Dodo. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, dog shit. Uh, Saturday goes into meh. I don't care. I'm putting that in meh. Is it meh risky, underwhelming, or meh? I don't care. Uh, mm, meh. I don't care. I mean, I wouldn't say it's underwhelming. It's just kind of like a you know, like a little bit of a hype song, I guess, a little party song for them. Well, it'll be risky Man, and technology care. will go into sex song category. <laughs> yeah, sex song, so that would be either doo-doo or I don't care how, depending on how you feel about sex songs. I'm going to put it as, I don't care, or I'm going to put it as man underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where does Catch a Wave go? I don't care. Catch a Wave, hey, hey, I don't care. <laughs> Meh, I don't care. Password? Meh, had home. potential. <laughs> this goes underwhelming. Underwhelming, had potential. Technology, uh, meh. Fuck everything? Does that go in? Uh, uh, I'm putting it in the, uh, in the good. You could put it in good. It wouldn't hurt my feelings. Uh, done to me. Uh, done That's to me good. good. Propaganda. B.com. That's good, right? That's not bad. Or just... In the context of the album, I'm putting it in good. <laughs> That's I'm putting it good in the context I'll of the album. I'm putting asterisk next to it. <laughs> That's a good point. Elevated. <laughs> Are we taking just JL's verse or the whole song? It'll get an asterisk. It's good. With an asterisk. If we're doing the whole that song. okay. I don't Some of the guest verses are kind of meh. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Joe but JL was wrong. good on it. JL kills it, so it's asterisk. And this time, which goes into the deep category. Yep. You have fucking so ones and I don't know, twos and underwhelming, uh, threes and doo doo, uh, <laughs> fours good banger, fucking five doo doo, uh, six man I don't care, uh, seven is sex <laughs> sex <laughs> sex song. Eights, eights, man. Fucking nines. I don't care. I don't know. No strong opinion. Underwhelming. 
<laughs> fucking 10 is sex song. And then 11 is a banger, 12 is a banger, 13, 14 are asterisks. Okay, good. Meh. So that's, that's, that's how you got it. We only disagree about two. Which two do we disagree with? The two up one. I just, I think it's, I don't care. I think it's okay. And you got it as it's underwhelming. <laughs> oh, man, underwhelming. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the real difference. Overall, we only think five are good and one of them's deep, so it doesn't really matter. It's not for you to judge, really. It's between him and people that are deep connected with him. <laughs> type thing. That's that's what tech gets mad about, by the way. It's shit like that. It's like, how am I gonna make an album that's got like some deep songs or whatever? And you say, "Oh, that album sucks." Like, motherfucker, half this shit ain't even for you. Then, like, this. That's rough. why your your two deep songs don't outweigh your eight songs that are mad to doo doo category. So your album gets a stamp of man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the album gets a stamp stamp of. I feel like it should even be less than man. Underwhelming. Yes. The expectations yeah. were so high. That's why Dipkus was such a disappointment. Because you have to take in the context of what JL did before. The hype of him getting signed to Strange. The fact that he did the best fucking... When they did their cypher for that year, JL hands down had the best verse on that entire cypher. In my opinion. His verse on that cypher was nasty. Him, yeah. Gotti was a standout on that cypher. His verse... I mean, the other ones were just, like, to be expected. They were solid, nothing special. Tech had a really good verse on that cypher. But JL was, like, come off a hot string of albums, had an amazing verse, and then he puts out this album as his debut album, <laughs> Strange. So the expectations were high for this kind of an album to come out. That's why it's very, you know, man to underwhelming category. Because the expectations were high as fuck. And then we get this. Alright, I'm done when you are. You good? Yeah. He keeps f***ing telling me you're broadcasting. It's getting annoying. Good. You need to know that I'm broadcasting. Okay.